Hello and welcome, new and returning, to Saviors RPG, uh, where, where we will be continuing our last stream session of our current side quest project called Tales from the Scuffed Gurney. It's a pirate side quest set in the Caribbean era of our own homebrew world named Bethai Ryoban, or as it's more commonly known as the Ribbon. Um, last time, the crew was assembled for the first time, and they made strides to uh, the first strides on their journey to deliver a chest with the, a locked chest with unknown contents. Uh, they went into some rather bad weather, and uh, one of the crew members had an unfortunate accident and was thrown overboard. Luckily for him, he was wearing something that allowed him to run and on the water and not perish in the waves. It was uh, my faith. Indeed it was. Um, and he was prone to say that he had stolen it, the thing. He wasn't specific about what it was, but he has stolen something and is careful with it. Barred it without their knowledge. Mm -mm. And uh, eventually the party ended up on an island where they decided to stay for the night. But before uh, before kicking it to the sleeping quarters, they decided to go on an explore exploration trip and found themselves in a cave where they encountered some rather big and somewhat scary sea creatures. They did battle, and one of the members fell unconscious. But they managed to resuscitate him, and that is where we pick off today. So, I'm Ambrose, and I will be DMing this game today. Uh, the captain, would you please introduce yourself and your character? <clears throat> Excuse me. I am Trichian Apple, Apple Gold, a uh, halfling, swashbuckling uh, hero in some ways, and um, I play a arcane trickster. Very good, very good. The chef, would you please go ahead and introduce yourself and your character? <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, I am Oberon Obara, the <laughs> the barbarian human uh, pirate chef. <laughs> and and uh, I uh, love to um, smash things with my war axe and stab things with my triton of fish command and command the fish of the seas and eat all the tasty, rare, exotic things. We have fun. Very good. And last but not least, the cannoneer. I'm Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Jabber. I play the Gablin uh, Ranger, known as Joe the Gablin. J Joe just just wants to shoot stuff. Just she's, that's his dream is to shoot the most important person in the world. He doesn't know who that is yet, but he imagines piracy is the way to discover that. Very good, very good. All right, so today we pick off just where we left it last time. So you managed to resuscitate uh, Tritrian back to health. Yeah, Here, And yeah. you stored some crab and lobster meat outside in pools of water. So, yeah. what are you guys doing? Um, uh, did we thoroughly search last night, or did we mostly just kind of beat feet and put stuff away, you guys? I can't remember. You did not do anything except resuscitating terror and uh, putting meats outside. So nothing has been searched. And, and this is the next off. morning? No, no, it's... Just at the same time. Till the evening. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, we are go. I'm going to scavenge the cave. Very well. Uh, anyone else wants to help out, or 
to essentially give you advantage or add up separate, separate sure. roles. <clears throat> Tyr will sort of gather himself up from the floor, try and scoop back some of the blood, try and, try and put it back. Then he'll sort of shuffle and try to help. All right. So go ahead. Roll with advantage. Investigation. Roll with? Okay. Invest Investigation. Okay. Investigation. Yes. Uh, natural 20. That is very good. For uh, you. But, uh, I, with my, if you include my fantastic investigation of a one, that's a 21. All right. So, what you find, well, the creatures themselves have nothing on them, but there is a lot of rubble around. And while moving away some planks, you manage to find yourself a locked footlocker. Oh, nice. And uh, you also see that the bigger shed-like structure that the lobster monster was sleeping on top of last turn, last game, sorry, uh, seems to have an opening into it as well. Hey, Captain, you should yeah. open this foot locker because I think it's full of feet. Feet? Yeah. Why feet? And he brings out his. Uh... It's a foot locker. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. And he sort of begins pick locking it, giving scant glances at the goblin next to him. Wonder what kind of feet. <laughs> I am Tarantino if you hadn't noticed. Do you have some toolkits or proficiencies with it? Yeah, I think they come with the uh Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe they do as well. Uh alright, just go ahead and roll me a D flat D twenty. They are gained at birth. Yes. I am a rogue. They were given to me. Let's see. Upon your 10th birthday. It's not sleight of hand or anything? Uh, it's your thieves tools, which is if you're proficient in them, add your proficiency to your role. Yeah. Well, you yeah. should be. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah. You got an eight. But I also have, uh, let's see, gloves of thieving. Does that or help? is this... That doesn't count for this. What if I do? Uh, I'm unfamiliar checks with and the dexterity item. checks. The gloves, uh, while wearing them, you get a fine plus bonus to dexterity side of hand checks and dexterity checks made to pick locks. Yeah, all right. So, oh, it's a, yes. So go ahead and add to dex modifier and to proficiency, I guess. Right. So then, D20. Yes. So then that is eight. Then plus five, and then plus, uh, let's see, where is it? Proficiency five again. is three at this level. Yeah. Not so... if you have it chosen. And you have five in dexterity. Then you have a plus eight. Plus eight, yeah, plus five. So that's 21. 38. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very well. Good enough. Um, so you managed to pick the locks. And what you find inside are two bottles and a pair of boots. Partially correct. Told you his feet. Pick up the boots, shake them. Uh, the boots are somewhat ornate leather. Uh, it has been inscribed and carved to make out some. Uh, pictures of nature, trees, and uh, um, like grassy hills and other things. Are they are they human-sized? They are smaller than human-sized. Oh. Damn it. I was gonna give him to Oberon, but because he seems like a hippie. But I mean, they're too small now. They'll so... fit you. I don't want hippie boots. But nature is beautiful, you isn't it? You put them on. 
I'm a halfling. Look at yeah, these. Yeah, he says he says smaller than human. That's you. So are so are you. But my feet are huge. I'm a halfling. Then <laughs> why are we arguing about feet size at this moment? My feet have claws. Okay, good to know. What what are the bottles inside? Uh, <laughs> the bottles have a red liquid inside them, and you can assume that these are healing potions. Oh, this would have been useful like five minutes ago. Right? And fine. There, there are two of those. I'm gonna and... put the boots on. We don't know if they're cursed yet, but we can <laughs> really find out. None of us are magic casters. I mean, you could you could put them on and find out if they're bad. I, I nominate Joe. Yeah, Joe put them on. Good, good. <laughs> Joe, Joe will put them on. Yeah. All right. Joe catches fire. <laughs> so, um, do they emphasize my calves? These are You've got magical beautiful nature. ankles. Oh, and uh, yeah, they will set your movement to a th 35. Nice. Pretty good for a ranger, yeah. And they will also uh, adapt to suit any sizable feet, so they, when you put them on, they adapt to your foot size and toenails and claws or nice. what, what not there might so be. That could hinder the uh, comfortable uncomfortness, or I think, yes, ease with comfort. Yes, ew, clothes, ew, <laughs> loincloth Gross. only. Thanks, <laughs> I do not want to cover I... up all the man meat, the glistening man meat. As for I don't that... mean to concern you guys, but these boots are made for walking, and I'm walking here. <laughs> No. Uh, and I thought it was going to be a these yes. boots are made for walking all over you, but okay. No, we went somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Alright, so that was the contents of the footlocker that you found. Next was the shed structure. Hey, Oberon, go check out that shed while we look at these boots. Alright, I'll go ahead and check out the shed and use investigation. Yep, go ahead. Three, a brilliant three. Plus something. Plus, do you have any? There's no. To that? <laughs> Not for investigation, uh, man. I hit you with my axe. <laughs> All right. Well, you walk inside, and uh, well, there is one thing that you notice. Uh, there are fallen debris and a crashed bed. Um, a desk that seems to be split open and yeah that's essentially what you come into uh, looks like a busted ass old place somebody was living out here you guys I think but Look it's been a while a since they've had a good night's rest <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking you want me to roll again yeah you can go ahead and roll again yeah from what I hear the neighbors are real crabby about self a uh, rock solid nine. A rock solid nine. Well, even with the nine, the structure is not that big, and you find that underneath some of the debris, you can spot a chest. Is it DC five? I found a chest under things. Let's check it out. I need I need the little the little short green guy to open this thing up though. I feel like that's gonna be. What is Joe? Joe, help! I, Chest? I, I got boots. Give it to the halfling. Yeah, but I need you to unlock it, probably. That's the halfling. I'm not a criminal. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> you heard okay. him, Captain. Sure. I am shuffling over. Yeah. Joe is admiring his thighs and buttocks as the boots emphasize them. Um, so, um, I assume you grab the chest, pull it out, and 
attempt to open it that as well. I'll just yeah, yeah I'll go or yeah sorry I'm watching yeah because I was yes. gonna pick up it yes yes might as well just do that yeah oh that's good yeah plus uh, five and whatever very good uh, yeah no uh, the bro the lock was a bit rusted and it took some time for you to get it open but it eventually clicked and. Uh, when you open it, you are met with abundance of water, damaged papers, and uh, a huge piece of cloth that seems to be covering something. When you remove the cloth, you are met with a fine, uh, almost I'm... still dry, not damaged by water or anything, uh, a nice set of leather armor oh nice i'm more impressed by that you more clothes to cover up my manliness you ah uh, but can right. you imagine if you were wearing some nice sexy boots why are you Just... trying to get rid of these boots oh i'm not i'm keeping these bad boys um you're just trying to make other people want them more yeah Stop trying to create strife within the crew. They're uh, very sinful boots. <laughs> Don't go there. And he takes out the armor. And underneath that, you also find a leather pouch uh, with a, a quite a huge sack, actually, uh, with 250 gold coins in it. Woo! Damn. Now, now well that I can wear on my loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, surely the sack it. beneath. Never mind. Uh, yeah, we take the gold. Uh, and we take all the water and the paper as well. I take the cloth that was covering them, because that's a real good cloth if it kept them all dry. Better what well. does this armor look you... like, by the way? When you pick up the cloth, you notice that it's just it it's even though it seems to have been wet at some point it completely dry and oh. uh, when the camp uh, the cave that you're in is very damp and uh, water drips from the ceiling continuously uh, but when the water touches the cloth it just falls off and doesn't leave any wet marks on it so it's completely repellent to water. Guys, check out this sweet cloth. I mean, the armor and the money is cool too, <laughs> but check out this cloth. Yes. Um, so that's from what you can gather that you find I, inside. I put on. So this the cloth is in addition to the armor. No, yes? it's a separate thing. Completely separate. Yeah, separate as in in addition to. Yeah, yeah like something yes. that is. Yeah. Hey, Obron, you want a cool cloak? Uh, I don't know. I think that I'd rather. Uh, this 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 thing potentially has strange features, and I think before I wear something, I'll have somebody who's uh, knows more about arcane things than I look into it. Yeah, but can you imagine oh. having a cloak that doesn't get greasy from all your man slickness? It'll stay. But then it would cover up more of my man meat. How, how, how will all of the villagers appreciate my hard work? But you can spill soup on it. It's wild. <laughs> Nothing will cover the man meat. <laughs> oh, God damn. He's got an issue with clothing. Calm down. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> think, think about it this way. Maybe there's some meat that you want to make dry. You wrap it in this cloth that and then it get dry. <laughs> That's not how that works. It seems to consume wetness. Yeah, but then that... I do that naturally. Don't want to hear about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, uh, let's, I, I um... mean, I drink water. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> let's leave it there. All right. So um, when you walk out of the shed just above doorpost, you see a finely crafted trident just above the doorpost on your way out. 
Oh, that, shit. Does it look anything like mine? Now, I don't know exactly how yours looked like. Would you please um, go ahead and explain it to the group? Yeah, it's... I have a picture of it that I can pull up momentarily. I was going to uh, say, it's, yes. a big, it's a big it, fork on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is... Uh, it, 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 uh, it's... Um, its length is is made up of the the, uh, the metal parts are clearly made up of some sort of silvery type metal. Not entirely clear what that is, uh, and it is ornamented heavily with um, things of the sea, uh, fish fins, and you know, wrapped in what looks like you know, what looks like uh, the 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 arm of a squid or something, and uh, coral, um, co- uh, you know, wraps around it as well. You know, it seems like the entirety of the tip of the trident is effectively is just made up of fish parts and undersea things. It looks similar, but the steel is a, of a darkened iron. It doesn't seem rusted or damaged, but it's almost pitch black. And Interesting. The, uh, the sort of shaft of it has a lot of dark tendrils moving across it. As if a creature from the deep is almost attempting to grab the sort of uh, pointy trident part, and it's mm. fully fully made of metal. It no no wooden parts. It's just one solid piece. That looks awesome, but again, skeptical about potential danger of magical items. Gotcha. I'll, I'll put on the leather armor and I'll sort of try and get the trident. I'm probably way too short. I'll lift him up. <laughs> Here you Thank go, you. little buddy! Ah, uh, grab it! Yeah. Thank you. I don't think you need to roll the, any strength for that, since it's not too, too, too high above you. But also because of all the man meat. Definitely. Copies. Absolutely. Um, so, Plus seven man meat. Uh, Trittrian, when you grab uh, the trident, you feel how icy cold it is to the touch. And it qu- has quite some weight to it. But it doesn't seem to... Even though you might have been skeptical to grab it, it doesn't seem to harm you in any way. But it's... It, it it feels a bit eerie when holding it. Ah, see, no problem. Besides, I've dealt with haunted uh, or cursed artifacts before. Like many things that you can pick up at sea or at port, you can get rid of it when you get to town. You see the right doctor or priest, still take care of it. May I recommend that we wrap this trident in that strange cloth that seems to repel water, just in case some strangers might befall us if it hits if it gets comes in contact with water. I already made a poncho. Oh, too late. Joe stealing everything. I mean, uh, taking things that he earned, clearly. I earned this. This is the beginning of Joe's fashion line. The poncho. The poncho. All right. But with that, and you step out back into the cave, and you see the carcasses of your... Your prey that you fought just stay, say, good 30 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, we were going to eat these. Well, I've already moved the int- the tasty parts into uh, tide pools down by the, the boat. Let's go have a so there's the fish. low country boil. And it's getting almost pitch black outside when you look out. Look out from the cave. Since, if I remember correctly, you went outside. Uh, in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, because you had a torch and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is the nighttime. Uh, could, could, before we leave the cave, could we try and scavenge wood from the wreckage inside? Or the shed? Or whatever. We might need planks. For Good idea. You could. Uh, absolutely. But, um, as you, not man of you had Dark mission, right? 
That's just goblin. Me. Yeah, only yeah, Joe. The goblin. Yeah. And so yeah, we'll go ahead and do it if you if you wish. Uh, you can find some some planks that's not too damaged or could be carved into square uh, solid square uh, wood wood blocks or that you could carry with you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll carry it back. Up, uh, yeah. We we got a we got a big man meat muscle man to mm-hmm. move all of our stuff mm-hmm. for us. All right. So I assume you just grab and grab some of it and you know pull away the rotten parts. Yeah. Uh, murky yeah. I stuff. take all the wood we find, wrap, throw it over my shoulder, and run back to the ship, yelling, "Beefcake!" <laughs> We strap the torch onto his forehead so he doesn't get lost. <laughs> so he's a walking. <laughs> he's well mean. Walking you lantern, know, but <laughs> yeah. His arms uh, are we're busy outside under the, under the moon. We can see at this point. I mean, well, come on. It is a story. It is a story. Night sky, and since the uh, the heavy weather that you encountered earlier today has dispersed. You can sort of see it in the distance, still uh, doing its work somewhere else, but above you it's a clear night sky, and the moon... So you're saying there's enough light for me to glisten? If you've been if you've been sweating, yes, you will be glistening. Um, Please roll a glisten check. I have plus seven to glistening. Glistening. Oh yeah. Uh, Automatic success. They should have sent a poet. Oh, Natural three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So My you glisten just is not strong tonight. Some forehead glisten. You look a bit stressed. The wood that you're carrying is covering up the light, so it doesn't fully get the that right angles. That must be. So he right. looks mysterious instead, which is also kind of hot. <laughs> Believe it is. These are facts. So, yeah. Uh, it, it, we will finish up with the cave. Uh, r- grabbing anything we need, picking up the crab, and uh, returning to our scuffed Gertie. Very well. So, um, who is taking points? On the Me. Way back. Yeah, we got. We got. Sure Go ahead and, and roll a survival check. Because even though it's you have a bright night with you, it's still pitch. It's still night. So. 17. Yeah, so uh, since you're essentially just backtracking, you find your path quite easily this time, and uh, actually with that roll, you'll find some new easier ways to get back to the uh, um, driftwood that you're carrying with you. Uh, is easier. This way, my vertically challenged friends, I found an easier path. Ha ha! Man meat! Nothing challenged about us. We're exactly as tall as we're meant to be. In my company, definitely challenged. <laughs> yes, we are. <clears throat> we are the one that's challenged. Let's go, Joe. Yes, Why? that makes sense. I agree. My intelligence is ten. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the boots. Um, yes. So, um, it takes you a roughly twenty, twenty-five minutes walk back uh, with all the stuff, new stuff that you're carrying. Uh, but you reach the ship, and it's um, it seems to be drifting out a bit. Oh shit! Did we not put down an anchor? I could have sworn we put down an anchor. I don't know. I'm just a cannonier. I don't know how to do that. No, you did. You did. Uh. It's just... Um, the tide is rising. Yeah. Oh, I see. I run well, out. time to get back to the ship, gentlemen. Yup, yup. Mm. So, well, you hurry up, and uh, if... Uh, let's see. Can I, can Joe run out to the boat, grab a mooring line, 
and run it back for Oberon to heave the boat <laughs> back to shore. You Somehow I think could. even I can't heave the shore. The boat back to shore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you could definitely just walk out to it. It's a good 15 feet out in the water okay. at this point, so... Nah, not too bad. And, yeah, so... You get over, and you can easily find some ropes and stuff that would match. And you know, you've been tying stuff to this ship earlier today, so you should be yeah. fine with doing that. At this we got point. plenty of rope. Indeed, you do. Yeah, so we'll get all of our stuff on and take all the crab down into the yeah. I'll kitchen. get all the crab as well and put it downstairs. Get it ready to prepare for food. Make a big old gumbo. Yeah, we'll simmer it overnight while we rest. Ooh, slow cooked. All right. So, I, I don't think I ever explained how your sleeping quarters look last time, but essentially it's it's an open room with the uh, hammocks, like net hammocks, hanging from the ceiling, and some hooks on the walls for coats and whatnot that you can hang. You each have a foot locker where you can store stuff, and they seem to be bolted to the deck. There are a couple of windows out, so you can see the movement of the sea, and hear the waves crashing against the... or not really crashing, but it's the movement against the rocks. So I assume you will have your evening yeah. dinner. We'll have a quick and... dinner of fish while we slow cook the crab for a good old morning. Mm -hmm, yes, yeah, so you guys, um, you know, uh, so um, I go ahead and go into the kitchen and unwrap everything that um, that I was cooking before we landed, um, intending for food for later. I wrap them into in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, in waxed waxed cloths, and uh, you know, have some some fresh cooked fish. For them to enjoy, and then uh, all the while, I will be, uh, you know, one-handed eating the fish, and then go ahead and cooking everything else uh, to for a, a slow simmer all night long. All night long. Very well. All night. Will you be eating together, or will you stay down at in your kitchen area for the foreseeable? I'm cooking. Time. All right. Yeah, I'm so. cooking right now. Getting ready for the evening. We're getting ready to, cut, to set it to simmer all night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tritrian and uh, Cho, any conversation or activity taking place between the two of you? Hey, what you gonna do with that trident? Uh, maybe I'll. Um, I use it to steer the boat, so I can steer it at a distance. I don't know. I don't know what it does yet. I'll need to try it out when I finally, you know. Get finally fully attuned with it. Can you even use the, a uh... trident? No. <laughs> I don't mean to stab people with it. If it's got magic, it can just kaboom. I mean, I guess. I mean, it's a trident. Worst case I... scenario, I just sell it. I mean, I could use a trident. Then take it. Nice. Matches my boots. It does? This is like a single black object forged in a single thing and not your green leafy boots. It's it's nature and industry. He just hands you the trident. Thanks. <laughs> he admires his new armor, but polishes yes. it a little bit. Now I have a yes. poncho and a trident. And this... <laughs> Yeah, you're kitted out. Beat out like a bandit. <laughs> so, after some time, um, you feel that the armor that you have put on Tritrian um, just feels to suit itself to your body. And a nice or very strange color pops up behind your neck. And snaps it. Yeah, and it feels almost like it's holding onto your neck. 
clearly this is why Captain <laughs> is supposed to have some... <laughs> the armor can't be ripped off my body is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> You're immune to neck snaps. Uh, final WrestleMania, here I come. So but the armor it, is like holding on to him, not wanting to let go is what's happening. Yes? Yes. <laughs> and uh, it it is a magical armor. It's a stud leather armor with a plus one to your AC. But it also does not seem to want to let go of you. While trying to move this collar that has appeared from seemingly nowhere, it has almost glued itself to your neck. And uh, while trying to, you know, removing it, it a bit, it turns your head out to the ocean. Hmm. And just sort of locks. <laughs> yes, and it's, it locks. It, it sort of locks your head um, at the position of the horizon for a good <sighs> eight or 11, like ten seconds. Help! I I think I'm stuck. In the, uh, okay, good. <laughs> That's uh, why you don't put on mysterious clothes that you found in a cave. Sure, you Mr. Should know Poncho. better, Captain. <laughs> yeah, you're one to talk. <laughs> you should know better than this, Captain. I hear that that trident is cursed. I I haven't felt anything. <laughs> well, some time passes for you as well, and uh... <laughs> here it comes. I cast protection no, from no. good and evil on myself. <laughs> <laughs> So, this trident, it still feels cold to the touch, but it doesn't, you know, something can, it has a icy feeling to it, but it doesn't affect you as much as you notice that how cold it is. And uh, while, you know, just moving it around a bit, you see streams of water, ethereal water, coming out from those three pointed and, and it's almost like you're moving a mirage of water from you, in front of you. And this is a trident of dark waters. Uh, it, it does 1d8 cold damage, and it's a plus one weapon as well. So it adds plus one to you hit and I got a wet trident and yeah that's, that's hey Oberon it's not cursed no that's good can you use martial weapons my friends have you learned how let me check my character sheet <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, says in yeah, character. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you've been trained in the 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 elegant art of poking things with a giant fork. I don't do as much damage as my bow. So I mean if you want the fancy trident, you can sorry. you can use it. Uh yeah, sorry, it adds No, I I'm... excuse me. I did not finish reading what <laughs> what I've been writing down. So it, it's 1d8 cold damage plus one weapon. But uh, it also has two charges of a blind with a DC of 15 uh, that lasts for one round. Nice. Nice. Well, I mean, nice. Elderon, if you if you prefer a fancy wet trident to go along with your other trident because you double have two tridents. hands. You have two hands. Double trident. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, yeah, I, I'm good. <laughs> I'm All good. Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to wield something until I've had an actual like detect magic sort of thing cast on it. That's just not oh, how. That's it, boring. That's not how he seems fine. Joe seems fine. Look at him. He seems fine. Yeah, he's fine. the guy with the thing that he can't take off. Sure, says right. the cursed arm of Captain. Shh. Shh. Calm down. 
I'm gonna go but, to besides like metagame talk real quick, like you know, I'm you know, it's nice to have a plus one for sure, but um, you know, I would rather have um two hands on a single trident so that I get d8, you know, because well, are you saying that D8. that trident does d8 in one hand? It, do, it does d8, d8 in one, one hand. hand, yes, are tridents versatile weapons? So, to if you tridents are versatile with... weapons, yes, so if you want to dual wheel it, it is a d10, one d10. Oh, D10 oh, that's versatile. Nice. I'm trying to find this uh, somewhere on like 5 U tools or something. Is this something you made up or is this a... No, I'm homebrowing this. I can look up? I'm, oh, I'm cool. right right on. Re- it, yeah. I item some stuff. Right I just make them myself, sir. So. Right on, right on. The office is open. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Alright, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and take the thing and set it next to my things. It seems like Seems like my friends aren't interested in it, and I do have some experience with tribe. Yeah, figured you could use it to cook something. Like a cold Sounds good. goulash. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so. I assume um, you get... Well, yeah, sorry. I was no, going to say, ahead, I'll take first watch, and I'd like to spend my entire first watch rolling Arcana to try and just figure out more information about this uh, weapon. Um, you know, and over time, I probably would figure out whatever it's possible for me to figure out. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Uh, all right. Second, third. I'll take the second watch. Uh, so These captain going offense. up third. Yep. Yes. All right. So you finish your food and whatnot and go to bed. So, uh, Oberon. Would you please roll a flat d20? Five. Yeah. And all right. So um, it starts to become quite foggy outside during your watch. And after a good two hours, it's almost completely covered uh, all around your, uh, all all around the girdy and the moon has disappeared um, and uh, you were going to so how oh sorry so how does he react to uh, do I sense that the fo- the cold has anything to do with this trident that I've been researching while staying on watch? Go ahead and roll an arcana check. Critical failure. Cool. D20 hates well, me there's... tonight. No, roll 20 hates me there tonight. Is... Yeah. There's a fog outside. It's not uncommon. Sorry. You don't think there's any correlation, however, with the trident that you're having. Okay, sounds good. Um, I want to look around and make sure that we don't have any lights on so that we can't uh, create a giant glow in this for others to see uh, or to make it harder for me to see. All right. Uh, well, the small candles that you might or might not have lit has burnt out. So it's just completely dark. All right. Um, I go ahead and bang on the deck and say, uh, there seems to be a strange fog settling down up here. Um, anybody want to take a look at this with me? I don't have good eyes like Joe. <laughs> so I get to sleep. Fine. Let me put my boots on. I go up on the deck. And... You come out to this just enclosement of a thick fog that surrounds you. It's called sea fog. Go ahead and roll me, both of you can, a perception. Oh, God. Eleven. Nineteen. Okay, so uh, as for you, um, uh, Joe, uh, this just 
overwhelming sensation of isolation that you feel. You just you do not really perceive anything else. Oberon, however, feel so alone. Out in the fog, you do hear something akin to a step followed by what could almost be explained as a wet towel being dropped on the floor. So it's... And this is coming from the shore or for the sea, from the sea? Somewhere around you. And it so just I cannot keeps... detect the direction. It does not seem to have a direction in of itself. It appears on one side at first, and then you hear it once again from the other side. All right, I, I bang my uh, shiny new trident of, of cold um, on, the, on the deck and say, Two arms! Something comes, something fell from the dark. Ah. Rush up. Still wearing my armor because I can't take it off. Yes. So. Oh, one quick question about the Trident of Cold. You said it casts blind twice a day and then recharges in the morning? Yes. Gotcha. GC 15. And this is blind slash deafness, yes? Uh, just the blind just, I'm just trying blind. to I'm trying to look up the spell so I can yeah. have it written down. Yeah, it's a constitution saving throw. Uh, uh, DC 15 to blind them for one round. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Is it an action to cast or bonus action? Uh, no, it's a you can decide on hit if you want the oh, effect hit. to trigger. Yes, Ooh. it's on hit. And it's a DC 15 of what? What's the Constitute, throw? It's just a flat. It's just a... Oh, yeah. oh, just a flat DC. Nice. Yes. Oh, no. So, sorry. I thought uh, the... You asked. Yeah, no, sorry. It is constitution. Yes. Gotcha. You're right. Gotcha. You're right. gotcha. Sorry, N bit new to item creation, so some things are not entirely written down. Sorry. Uh, do you want me to? Um, do you want me to just follow the way that the Trident of Fish Command does and have it be one d three recharges in the morning, um, or just have it be all be recharged? Uh, no, all of them just recharges. Just two charges. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like a plan. So. Yeah. But you. So, Terry, when you get up on deck, you also see this complete enclosement of fog, and you you can also go ahead and roll a uh, perception. Um, let's see here. Better than I expected. All right, so as soon as you get out, you are met with the wall of fog. And you hear, also hear this stepping and smacking noise. Uh, but you do notice a solid point of light coming from the dawnward side of what you, uh, of the ship. And it's coming right for you. But what is strange is that you know that Dawnward, that's just ocean. And the, the sounds grow. Now you as well, uh, Oberon, uh, notices yes. this light. And you hear, since you've been focusing a bit more on the sounds, uh, you now notice it's just coming from one solid point. All right, ready okay, yourselves. Okay, so coming from the sea. Gotcha. <clears throat> ready yourselves, men. We uh, we uh, may uh, have an intruder here. What do we? What? What? Joe, why don't you go up into the uh, um, up into the tree up high, <laughs> so that we can, or whatever it's called, the the Crow's thing. Nest. Then there you go, crow's can, nest. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll be all alone. Go up into the crow's nest. No, 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 no. Yes, but then you'll be able to do your ranged attacks, my friend. I have protect a us. Deep feeling of isolation due to this fog. But okay, let, let's let's light this torch. Okay, I'll go up. I'll light a torch. I'll go. I'll light a torch. 
And I use Mage Hand, and the Mage Hand will carry out the torch. I can use my mouth to carry it. Alright, so you light the torch, and it travels out. But with the fog being as thick as it is, you just see a light, the light source, or just the light shining from the torch. You don't perceive it in of itself as it disappears into the fog. And uh, how far are you throwing it out, or just moving it out? I mean, uh, the hand can go like 30 feet away from me. Yes. And that's about where I wanted to go. So, um, around 30 feet out, it seems to pass through the light. That seems to be coming closer towards you. And it stops and vanishes. The light or our light? Uh, Terry, you know that your torch is still out there. You can feel it with your mage hand, but the light that you perceived just disappeared. Uh, let's see. I return my torch towards me again to see if anything changes. It comes back to you. It's still lit, a bit damp. But the original light is now winked out at this point. It's gone. And Keep anyone your... who... Yeah, I go ahead oh, and arm oh. myself with my new trident. Um, all of you can make one additional perception check. I got an eight. Seven. Twenty-one! Damn. Well, so, um, both Oberon and Tritrian, you I assume you're just following these, uh, the light that Terra has been just brought back. However, yes. Joe, he, you notice that just behind you, a light seems to shine up. Hey, did one of you guys light another torch? It's down uh, here. No, we're only one down here. It was this other torchlight that's coming up behind me ominously. Maybe you should shoot it with your arrow, my friend. That's rude. Yeah, I do, uh, no. I do that. <laughs> it, it's, it's sneaky. Clearly, violence is the only thing it'll understand. Yeah, I shoot. As you turn, you see a man standing in the middle of the air holding a lantern. And one of one thing that pops out is that one of his feet seems to be be completely flattened, as it's been crushed, and it almost looks like a duck foot. Hey, hey, guy, I'm gonna shoot you. So if you don't want me to, please wave your lantern like you just don't care. Uh, um. When you speak to it, it, the man that you can make out it to be, he's covered in a long, like, bluish marine-colored coat. He has a hat on his head and hair hanging, long black hair hanging above his he head. And he is holding this small lantern. Uh, he drops the lantern and it just disappears out of thin air. That's right. the opposite of what I asked you to do. He has this wriggly move to him as he raises his head. And what you can see is a ghostly figure uh, with parts of its face almost disappearing into a black smoke that seems to be sucked off to somewhere. Oh, good God. Captain, raise the anchor. We got a ghost. <laughs> We got ghosts! Me, me King, oh. help me raise the anchor! Raise the anchor! Yeah, I, I run to start uh, cranking the, uh, you know, cranking the anchor back up. Oh, God! And this wrig wriggly hands stretches up towards you and reaches out. And you can oh, now God, see he that his my eyes boots. are completely pitch black. And he just... 
his mouth opens very, um, how do you say, uh, jaggedly. It takes like multiple stops on its way to open. Yeah. And all we can hear is, help us. Oh, F dash crap. And I would I cast protection from evil on myself. <laughs> it's one of the few and spells I have. When you do, he disappears. Oh and, God. Uh, Obron, in front of you now stands a man with his arm stretched out, calling for your help. Help us. And you too see this smoke-like um, features of him. Now it's not just his face, but also his cloak is being... It's almost like it's being sucked off to somewhere. Uh, what direction is the cloak being pulled to? It's pulled towards... Um, well, the east. Uh, so that will okay. be... Uh, let's see. Duskward? I believe it is. Yes. So out towards the ocean also. Also out towards the ocean. Gotcha. Um, speak plainly, ghost, or I will bank uh, vanquish you, banishing you. Oh, you hear me? And I do. Uh, Help us. Help who? Me. And he goes or travels slowly towards you and uh, sort of stands on the deck, even though he's not exactly touching it. Right. I am. Um, I. It's me. Jenkins. And anyone who heard this can go ahead and roll a history check. Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Uh, well, neither uh, Tritrian or Joe knows this, but. Oberon, you have heard while traveling towards this place that there is was a famous boy man who once lived here named uh, nicknamed Padfoot Padfoot Jenkies. And uh, what was so special about him was that he was actually born out on these pirate islands, which is very uncommon in of itself. Um but he was somewhat of a mascot to uh, the blunder, uh, Ocean's blunder that you are currently um, attempting to be employed by. Um, one thing that happened to him at, on his youth was he was helping down on the docks and he managed to drop a cannonball on his foot, leaving him uh, disfigured. And it never properly healed, and they gave him the nickname Padfoot after that. Uh, you also know that gotcha, gotcha. A, last year he uh, he vanished, along with his crew. Uh, so he was his own, he was a captain, or he was just part of the crew at that point? Then? He was a captain, uh, not, not the okay. sort of main general that uh, still, Rao was was still the right. fleet leader, uh, but gotcha. he was captain of one of his own ships. So okay. you know. Who uh, so I lean for. So I I um I hold my keep my trident between the two of us and say that's close enough, my friend. It sounds like we may actually be friends. We are here on a mission from Rao, and I look and watch to see in a reaction. Rao. Oh, thank you. Has he sent to help us? Clearly you are beyond help, my friend, but what can I do to help your rest be easy? 
a while back where you got trapped while making sure something took a hold of our ship and dragged it out into the abyss while this, us, the crewmen, are still on the bottom being devoured by something. We do not, we can't see it, but we do know that it has attendees around him. Something is holding us here, and what we are now are being pulled into something dark. And you sort of see more of this. Mo it, it almost attend it intensifies. It almost pulls on him. Gotcha. Uh, please help us. Just looking something up here real quick. I think that I have some ability to be able to breathe underwater, but I'm not sure if that activates. Well, yeah, okay. Well, we need to, like, get underwater and fight something. We don't know what it is. Well, I mean, speaking of myself here, I can't breathe underwater. I don't I have any spells swim. for it. No, yeah, exactly. Do you have any way for us to help you? Are you guys talking to that ghost? He seems cool yeah. right now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Please hurry. It won't be long. If you travel to us, I might be able to help you as long as you free us. And as he says that, he gets almost dragged back into the fog. And where he stood is now a burnt mark onto the deck of the ship in the shape of a necklace with one of them being just this bigger uh, with a big pearl on it that seems to almost go out um, into the uh, almost being pulled out from the necklace and it's just falling off so the necklace is there and not a mark of a necklace. It, it, is a ne it is a mark of a necklace that's been burnt into the deck. Burnt my ship. Okay. <laughs> Do any of you recognize this shape, this symbol left behind by this fell creature? Looks like a necklace. Terror. Um, sorry, Tertrian. Would you go ahead and... Well, Roll an intellig intelligence check. I shall try to. It's a 12. Well, it wasn't that too long ago, but you do remember seeing this shape from the map that you were looking at before. Or something like it. Right, so uh, where on the map? It's not too far from here. Maybe a few hours of travel um, to uh, uh, what was it again? To the east or uh, downward? Right, a few more hours downward, and we'll be there. But we are pretty beaten up, or at least I am. We do need our rest before we can try and combat that creature over there. Yes, I agree. Let's get a good night's rest, fill our bellies in the morning, and head out. We're gonna go help him? Well, he's part of the crew that we're trying to be part of. If we can't help him now... Then dead. what's what will be the hope of anything happens to us? Our dead. entire purpose of this mission is to gain favor with Rao. Finding what happened to his lost captain may Our do mission just that. We should go talk to a lady. We're just gonna go quickly talk to a lady on an island. 
Well, and you you, you grab the crabs. You, you can walk on water. You take the thing and you go see the lady. We'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. No, it's a quick in and out adventure. It'll be fine. Five minutes stop. Yeah. Go. It'll be a quickie. Oh God! Why did Acid I get would... stuck with you guys? As it would have it, you know that it's just a, um, let's say it's a half a day diversion from the road that you're actually going on. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, voice in the sky. I'll believe you for now. <laughs> or no, I mean, Terror, uh, Terror, you know that it yeah. is. It's it's not far. It's right this path, and like a little bit of it eh, to the side over there. It's fine. How long are we going to go be underwater fighting ghost monsters? Our man, the 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 mascot captain man, he'll he, he'll supply us when we get there. Don't the worry. The dead man? You know, the dead one? Yeah. So he's I dead. I can go take a look with the support of uh, some fishy friend that we may find out there to get a good look at what's going on before we even decide if it's worth it. But I can only do it from so far away, so we might as well get some rest, get a little closer... And once we figure out where this is, I can go ahead and uh, use use my fantastic Triton, uh, my my Triton, not the new Triton, and uh, we should be able to get a look at what's going on down there without having to go down ourselves first. God, my boots are gonna get wet. Not just the boots, no, no, no. Well, I mean, I can't, I can't swim. Whatever. All right, let's go to sleep. We'll wake up in the morning and. Maybe reconsider our choices. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Give it a good long think about if you want to help a dead man. Yeah. I mean, there are dead people everywhere. And he points up towards the sky that's covered in fog. There's a planet up there apparently filled with the dead. So don't worry. You know. Yeah, it's just a rumor. I don't know. I, so I, I got this pamphlet that the moon is covered with zombies. I don't believe that. Fine, okay. We we take a rest. See you in the morning. So, I know it's a bit early, but I think... Would it be alright if we took a quick break right here? Sounds good yeah. to me. Sure. Oh, very well. We so, take our... we'll take our 10 to 15 minute break here. And we shall see you guys very soon. Hello guys and welcome back to Saviors RPG. I uh, hope you had a nice break, and as I, I'm pretty sure that we all needed one. And yeah, so let's get back into this. So you just had your encounter with Padfoot, the ghost of Padfoot, and he had left a mark on the on your ship. Uh, you decided to go and have finish the rest of the night, and eventually uh, the fog disperses and it's back to just a clear night. Uh, I think the rest of your um, uh, shift, um, Oberon, goes smoothly. There's no more ghostmen appearing out of nowhere. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And after you, it was Joe. What'd I do? It's um, your your shift, so go ahead and roll oh, me yeah. a flat d20. 20. <laughs> 20. <laughs> okay. Um, I find 100 gold on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's nothing like that. Um... You go ahead and roll me a perception check. 23. 23. You hear a different, uh, differentiating from the uh, like movements of the ocean that's, and the waves coming towards the rocks. You hear a very unfamiliar splash, almost as if something jumped into the water. Uh, 
And when you I look, go, I go look good. Yeah, I'll go look over. Uh, there has certainly been some movement, and next towards the uh, the railing of your ship, you see two hands coming out of the water, and you are met with these bulging, big round eyes staring up towards you. And what you want is my boat. It get, the creature, noticing that it's been spotted, gives up, opens its mouth, and it's just this spherical, gray, pale head with two bulging eyes, no eyelids, letting out a screech as it drops back into the water. Okay, uh, I'll see you next to... time. <laughs> and it swims away. Bye. Uh, it was humanoid in um, in its features, uh, as it had hands. Merfolk. Probably one of them fish people Oberon keeps talking about. Um, yeah, and... Uh... For the rest of the night, it, nothing more seems to happen. It seems to get almost a bit too calm as the wind dies down a bit. Huh. No more ghosts. It's a very I mean... pleasant night. It's Since you're in this like Caribbean area, the air, the moisture of the day has been dying it down a bit, so it's very... It still has a nice warmth to it, but it's not as moist, I guess. All right. Well, just a good night. I will go and uh, wake up the captain for his shift. Yes. Hey, Captain, watch out for weird fish things that are... Uh, weird fish things. Uh, right, sure. Yep. Weird fish things, like what? Yeah. I don't know, there were weird gray fish things that were gonna come up on board, but I saw it and it screamed at me and swam away and I was just like, bye. Ah, okay. Sure, So, so yeah, right. just, you know, keep an ear out. Do I overhear this? You're asleeping. I believe you're asleep, unless you want to... Sleep, baby boy. Roll for a being woken up. <laughs> I'm sleeping, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's <right>. good. <laughs> I'll let you know in the morning. I'm gonna go sleep now. Alright, so, Terror. Uh, go ahead and roll me a flat d20. I will do exactly so. Oh, a prestigious four. Four. Okay. So, um, you do you know it's about roughly four hours left until sunrise, and uh, during the time that you're staying up, the wind dies down even more. And if you go ahead and if you uh, would be so kind to go ahead and roll me a perception, you might not notice something. I shall check with a seven. With a seven, well, you you start to hear a sweet song. Almost like a lullaby coming from somewhere. And it almost has this chime behind it. it. It's not composed of words, more just tunes. And it's, it's like, a, like a soft lullaby. And if you would be so kind and go ahead and roll me a... Oh, what is it? It's a wisdom saving throw of 16. Ooh, failed by a sea mile. 
All right, so this song encapsulates you. It's almost like you're sitting just in, uh, how do you say, on a solo chair in front of a whole choir. It drowns out every other noise. And it's telling you almost that you should head towards the railing of your boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got one, yeah. And when you do and look down into the water, you see a fair maiden looking up towards you with big, uh, big, beautiful eyes and a pleasant smile, as well as seashells in its blonde, long hair. And it waves towards you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he turns awesome. around and he uses disguise self to make himself look more attractive. <laughs> ah. She smiles and she she doesn't say, but with this song, she you feel compelled to go and fetch something from your uh, cabin. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, and what you're being asked to get is the bag of gold that you had been storing away. Or one okay. of you did. Yeah. That is on my belt loop, by the way. Oh, no, yeah. But I mean, this is, this is going to be worth it, trust me. <laughs> I'll try to steal it off his belt loop. All right. So, um, Oberon, would you please roll me a... What would, would that be? A constitution? Uh, just a flat D20 plus con mod. Since I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be. Roll, uh, I, got a, I got a natural 20. M my guess would be uh, probably yeah. passive, <laughs> passive perception. Though. Yeah, all right. So... As soon as uh, Tritrian reaches for uh, your pouch, you awake to the clinking sound of someone trying to grab your sack. Ah. Um, um, let's see here. I want to go ahead and um, stop them. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I reach out and grab his wrist, clamping down with my vice-like hands. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, we haven't distributed this yet. Uh, oh, but there's like this lady, and she needs this gold for me to, you know, as you Tell know. Tell me more about this lady. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. You think you're gonna? Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let's go. Show me this. Show me this lady. We'll leave the gold here. Show me this lady, and I go into the kitchen and hide the gold somewhere they can't find it. I call dibs though. Yeah. Just, um, just to remind you. Now that you're awake, Oberon, I would like you two to make. Um, I said wisdom right before. Yeah, also a wisdom yes. saving throw. Uh, a nine. It actually sounds like a pretty good idea to give give this gold away. Okay, well, on second thought, maybe we should give this gold away. Yeah, see? It does seem like a good idea. Uh... But with that, um, since it's so very uh, different to what your actual idea was while well, hiding the gold, I would like you to make a second roll, since it's uh, contra very contradicting. 16. 16, all right. So, uh, and the DC was 16, so you succeed this time. So it goes a bit, bit back and forth, like, oh, no, I'm going to hide it. Uh oh, maybe, maybe, yes, yes, good idea. And now just back. No, this is very, very wrong. We shouldn't do this. No, stick with your first change of mind. Don't, don't <laughs> shift it too often. Just you go upstairs, go you go upstairs, and you see this, this friend of yours. Keep her busy. 
and I'll be there momentarily with the gold. I can't keep her busy if I don't have the gold. I need the gold to keep her busy. I pull out one piece and throw it to him. I've got more than that. Oh, well. Yeah, this might entice her onto the boat because I don't want to be in Perhaps. the water when it happens. Perhaps. 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 Do you got a fishing uh. rod? I do not. I fish with Damn my it. fists and my fingers and my trident. Fair. Oberon, um, since you've been spending a lot of time with merfolks, maybe you've actually heard of this. I want you to make a history check. Nineteen natural. Um, history is yeah, nineteen. Nineteen. Yes, but even with that roll, you. Tales of seamen being uh, ent- ent- entranced by voices and singing from the depths are not too uncommon as tales around bars. But when you've spent some time with the merfolk, you actually know that there is a creature that has this siren cap- capability to enchant people to do their biddings. They are not as malevolent as they are mischievous. and uh, But it's very rare to actually get a good glimpse of what they might look at, look like, okay. because they seem to be appearing as what the uh, what the perceiver of them wants to see, or something that they would find uh, beautiful. So she looks like a okay. halfling to me. Yes. Yes. Damn, yeah, sorry, right. I forgot you. I actually yeah. forgot that you were a halfling. Yeah, so she would ah. be a halfling with a huge meaty nose and gigantic, beautiful eyes. So he's basically almost picked the uh, the sack cloth with his bone. Uh, but do you know that this creature? They are called. Uh, they they are called sirens, but they are not. The actual, uh, they have the siren song, but they might not actually be sirens themselves. It's just a very strange mm-hmm. creature that might appear around here. Okay, well, um, I uh, I send Tyr back upstairs. Um, I double check and make sure that Joe is still asleep. Is he still? Asleep? You can go ahead and decide that for yourself, Joe. Would uh, a song be something that would cause you to wake up? Uh, sure. I rolled a dirty 20 on my perception, so I'll say Joe wakes up. Joe wakes up. Falls out of his hammock. You also, you, um, now you start to hear the song as well, and I would like for you to make a um, wisdom saving throw. Cool. Uh, not going to be very high, because that's a 10 on the dice, plus 2. 10 on the die, plus 2. Well, um, this song that you hear, it's very strange and scary. But quite beautiful, screechy in a way, almost, for your ears. But it's quite nice. And it. Oh, it's the speech people again! Oh, good God, I told him to be careful of the fish people! And uh, with that 21 perception, you do notice the location uh, of where the. the point of origin from the song. Yeah, I will. I will run out. Do I have? How much wits about me do I have? Um, In the how sense much do you want? Of if it's <laughs> a clear fish minded. person. Yeah. Oh, clear mind. He's been entranced um, by the it, fish thing. Yeah, right? you've yeah. been. Yeah, you. You have also I've, been entranced. I've so been it's... entranced, but. Am I still Joe? You seem to be still Joe. It's telling you to come towards it, but 
it's I'm gonna shoot this fish person. When you look over the railing, you see that strange gray Oh god it's disgusting. It does it's it does not seem to have any sort of shape to its face and it seems to be screeching at you once again. Oh god, why I told him to be careful why is it back? Tear is holding the gold coin over the side and he's sort of uh, singing to her in halfling. Hello, my what? honey. Hello, my darling. What are you doing? Oh, God. So while this is happening, I go ahead and hide the remaining uh, the remaining gold that is in the pouch we found under the floorboards where I found uh, my secret hidey hole that no one else knows about from last time. Yes. Uh, then I'll come ahead and come upstairs with both my tridents, my, uh, my cold trident on my back, my fish trident with, uh, in my hand. All right. So... Um, what you come up to is, uh, what you see is that Joe and Tyr are both standing, looking over the railing. Tyr seems to be holding the coin uh, over it, almost as if to reach down and give it. And uh, Joe is screaming that the thing that they are looking at looks very ugly. Um, I want to uh, go over to the uh, edge and try and get a look at what Joe is seeing. So, what you're met with is a very beautiful, very beautiful woman lying in the water. She sings a very, be very nice song, and she's just looking up towards you with a huge smile. I have to ask, though, for Oberon, uh, is she super buff as well? Does he get slightly jealous? Oh, so sorry, I was not meant to assume, but what would Oberon find... Very beautiful in a sexy mer ladies, baby. All right, sexy. It's a beautiful sexy mer lady singing Woo! towards you. Oh God, it's circular round so teeth like a lamb of prey. So having having uh, having seeing all my friends act so strange and having fought through the song earlier, I'm clear that some there's some shenanigans going on. I'm familiar yes. with this kind of a creature. So I go ahead and aim my uh, Triton of Fish command at her and shoot that uh, the uh, the uh, dominate um, fish people a power at them. So zap, zap. DC of 15. Uh, con save. I don't know, was that right? Hold on. Yes. DC of 15. Two magic Tritons? You gave me the other one. I tried to let you have it, bro. I want two tries. It unfortunately rolled a 16, but even so, you seem to, uh, even with the thing it was attempting to resist, it did not seem applicable. Or was it just so official? Just, so just, just, fun fact, if, just for fun fact, anything that has a natural swimming speed, I can do that too. Sorry, Whoa. I did not know. Um, yes. Yeah, huh. alright. I thought, I thought it was just uh, creatures. Everything have a well, maybe it is then. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know no, what? No, no, uh, only some, only fish creatures do. Only things that, yeah, like I don't have a natural swimming speed that's like written in the book next to my character. Oh, uh, so that's how it is. Mm, very good. No, no, then it just it seems to resist your command, but it does notice that something is being targeted towards it, and are we in combat yet, or are we still in roleplay? Uh, you are still in role play. I try again. You try I'd again. Like to shoot it. You would like to shoot it. So. Guys, don't so harm my girlfriend. What the fuck is wrong with you? Gross, yes. Great now. Fish flesh. She. The. Um. Tara, would you please go ahead and you uh, roll another wisdom uh, saving throw, as it seems to compel you to do something else. A 17. 17. Well, she just asked you to sh push uh, Oberon over the edge of the ship. But this feels very wrong. And yeah. you are snapped out of the entrancement. Entrance. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The spell. Yes. Does, does it still look like a halfling down there? Oh yeah. But listen, honey, no, that that no. Like the, the other thing is cool, but no, I won't kill one of my crewmen for that. Maybe closer to shore, but not now. 
And now that creature looks very upset, and it jumps up and grabs a hold of the railing and is attempting to pull itself up onto your ship. Muted. Huh? Sorry. Oh, sorry, something. what happened to my second attempt to use Dominate? Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, that's a 14. Alright, so DC 15. So it fails. So yes, so it fails. Yes. So that, as soon as it grabs on hold, hold of the railing, you... your command uh, t takes, takes hold, and it's under your control. Okay, so now I share a mental link with the thing, so I should be able to understand its nature. Can we get a little more information about what it is? So, this is a very strange reflective creatures, a creature that lives among rocky islands, just like the one that you're on. Um, and it fools and thrives on visitors coming close. It's almost like a water goblin. Uh, it's not very powerful in like its strength, but the thing that makes it so strange is that it almost has this it has this compelling force to it. And what you figure out that sure. that is actually uh, quite uh, that, that not many others know is that it's it's a water it's a water goblin. A very strange awesome. one. And they have So um oh, go ahead, sorry. So when you do notice that the features uh, that you saw in it, uh, the beautiful merfolk lady, that thing goes away because now you know what it is. Awesome. And you, you see also see this gray blobbish cre little creature with uh, what's called swim uh, skin between its fingers. Fins and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, it's not too... It does not look beautiful. It doesn't have eyelids. It just has these bulging eyes that almost pops out of its grey, uh, spherical head. Awesome. Um, I command it to lay flat on the deck in a prone position and not defend itself. And then I attack it with two hands with my trident of cold. <laughs> All right. Um, it, it will... Go up and lay on top of the uh, on your deck, and uh, uh, Tyr, you now observe as Oberon takes it. Uh, he what? Uh, go ahead and roll that with advantage. Takes a swing with his uh, uh, deep water trident towards this beautiful halfling uh, woman lying on on your deck. No. Uh, you swing and you miss. Both. Uh, uh, I rolled a fourteen. You rolled a fourteen. That's enough. Yeah, because I have I have plus seven strength and my, my sorry my set my strength modifier including my proficiency all that stuff is plus plus seven and I got a five the first time and I have a plus oh, yeah. I have a plus one in addition to that yes. as well because of yes. the to hit. Oh yeah, you oh, sorry I yes that is true. Um. I uh, forgot your modifiers. Uh, that's a hit. Oh, Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. All right, so that's uh, 1d10 damage. Uh, let me see. Four damage. Four plus strength modifier. Strength. Strength. Oh, not safe. Oh, so, yeah, right. Uh, oh, uh, eight. Eight damage. Eight damage. And then because I am now a fifth level, I can make a second attack. Go ahead. Is, is, is it a plus one weapon? Does it grant plus one to attack and damage? Right. So it's then yes. what? Oh, plus one to attack and damage? I thought it was yes. just plus one to attack. Uh, no, go ahead and add that to damage as well. Okay, so then that's a oh. nine the first time. Um, my, yes. second, my second hit, uh, my second a a attack action is, uh, I mean, they're still prone, but it's still prone. It's an 18. Yeah, definitely an 18. <laughs> you know, they're still prone, so it's it's um it's advantage. Um yeah. Okay, so in that case I got a um 25 to hit for the second one. Yeah, yeah, it it's it has a quite a low 
AC. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, uh, D10, so 12 more damage? 12 more damage. So how does it look like when you butcher this grayish water goblin creature? All right, as it flaps around on the deck, spreading its slimy nastiness all over the place, I staple it to the ground with my with, with two hands raised high above my head. I yell, Rah! and stample it, staple it down to the ground, punching through into the deck with my trident with both the fourth of force of two hands, rip it out of its body again, and it screams and writhes, blood spraying everywhere and all over my friends. And one more time. <laughs> Beautiful. No! Yes, so your barbarian friend has just stabbed to death this beautiful halfling woman that you've seen arisen from the water. And... But... As the life drains from it, so does its visual enchantment. And you now you see this grayish, almost bloated goblin creature that has been attempting to fool you to give you its gold. What the fuck is wrong with this? <laughs> it was so beautiful, but now your trident made it ugly. You have discovered the ugly stick. Ah, I believe it was always ugly, my friend. I just showed its true form. You were enchanted. Now, give me back that coin so I may put it with the rest of the coins. He give me your money. Throws it back. And then he sort of begins dumping the body into the water. Gross. Yes, this creature is entirely yes, naked. Yeah, we will That's certainly not want to eat this. Uh, you know, and it. But we should like search it thoroughly. Fish. Perhaps it's not... cut its stomach open and see its contents. It is a carnivore, after all. Maybe it has something interesting in there. I'll leave that to you, Chef Man, as he slowly uh, backs away. All right, I go ahead and take out my trident and slice open the stomach of the animal. What do we see? So, what you see inside this little goblin's stomach is mostly, like, fish bones. Uh, you see one seagull flipper that's still uh, semi-digested. Semi ah. Now smells I want to know what the seagull something. heard in the song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sexy seagulls. Mm. Um, and Find me something for me. Small <laughs> pebbles and rocks and... Go ahead and roll me one investigation. Fourteen. Fourteen. Well, it doesn't have such a big stomach. Eventually come across a half-digested finger with a ring on it. It's a gold ring with an ornamental pearl on top of it that has this... Um, uh, seaweed crests around it. Uh, this is similar to the necklace we saw? It is. I see, I see. Um, can somebody go and grab me uh, so, you know, a leather pouch of some kind? We best not touch this. Who knows what it is or what it's capable of. But this does remind me of the uh, symbol on the map and also the one left burnt into our deck by that ghost last night. Oh, that was real? Oh, that was real, all right. I mean, the marking is still there. I'll go pick up the neck, the ring. Or, or it, it, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm holding the finger with the ring on it. Take the ring um, off. Can you hand me a pouch to put it in? <laughs> I don't have. No. Fine. You have a you poncho? And your, you and your so I, weird safety habits. So um, I go ahead and go down into the, um, you know, Oprah says, I'll be back in a moment, my friends, and goes downstairs um, and, uh, uh, you know, throws the, you know, takes, takes, takes the ring off of the finger and puts it in one of my, uh, one of my uh, wax cloths that I used to save uh, food in, tie it tight with a, with a knot and then put it into my, into my uh, money pouch. Why don't you wear it? Very well. So Free. While I'm down there, I also replace the um, the final coin back into the coin pouch and then put it back under the floor. Good. All right. So, well, there's roughly two hours left until the sun rises. So do you guys want to 
start the day off early? Or do you feel like maybe going back to sleep for just the final two hours? How are you guys feeling? Do we feel off to like up to scruff? Do we feel like we've had the full rest that we need? I would say so, yes. I can early Especially play. you, Terror, uh, since you had the first that time, so you're all right. back to health and whatnot, so. Right then, okay, if everybody feels good for it. If everybody feels up for it, let's go and do some ghost stuff. And he sort of kicks the corpse off the the railing. The literal worst. And it sinks immediately. It does not float in the slightest. It's almost like a rock now. Okay. Ugh. All right, let's go, Captain. Uh, let's go, crew. And he sort of stumbles up to the um, the steering mechanism. The wheel. Mechanism. The wheel, yes, the wheel. And so, soft morning breezes catch your sails, and your, I assume you just, you know, finish off everything, raise anchor. Yeah. Oh, well, we, we have a nice meal first with my special overnight soup. Um, do we get any temporary hit points for that? Go ahead and roll me a d20 plus your proficiency. Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> plus, yeah, plus proficiency. So that's yep. yeah, twenty. Uh, yep. Go ahead and roll me a d12. Two. Two. Okay. So uh, you'll get uh, two plus four. Yeah. So six temporary hit points to start off the day. Sweet. Since you Woo. rolled so high on the die. I feel healthy. Ooh. And I was so looking forward to giving you all food poisoning. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. Too Fun good of chef. <laughs> 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 all right. So, any conversations taking place? Or is it just off to work? Is Joe questioning why we're going to go help some ghosts? But, you know, it's fine. Sorry. I guess we set sail, my friends. Can we try and roll a check on the ring? Any oh, type of check? Hit, 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 hidden hit, somewhere. Hit, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We don't know where it is. I was going to wear it. It's, it. The ring is in my is in my, my gold pouch, which is on my belt. And, yeah, but can I wear um, it? If you want to wear it, you can wear it, but I'm not going to do that myself until we have somebody look at it. It's like 10 days away. Give it to me. All right, I pull it out and toss him the little bag. Say, <laughs> all right, it's your funeral. So, uh, you you put on this ring. It's it's a bit larger than your fingers, but it would suit... Well, exactly. It, it, it will probably fit your thumb. Um, you don't notice anything particular you you do feel that it's magical and it's very akin to the one that you're all, that you are already wearing <laughs> matching rings let me get a full set yes so this too is a ring of water walking <laughs> i can walk on two waters now <laughs> <laughs> Right. I have one for each foot. How about well, I or if, Oberon take it then? If, yeah, why don't we? Uh, one of us, one of us take that. Would you? Would you like to toss for it, my friend? Mm, I do like games of chance. Mm, sure. Okay, so on a d six, uh, three plus is heads. One plus is tails. Yeah. Or we could just do a, a D two. I've got a also I've that. got a one and a twenty coin. <laughs> All right, I'll be the one. You be the two. Sure, sure. All right. Yay! 
Okay. Um, I go ahead and fit it over my pinky finger. So you're the t- so. you're the two. My bad. It's yours. Take it. Yes. Enjoy. Yeah. And I put it over my thumb. No, it, it would fit your bit more uh, scrubby hands, I believe. Uh, all right. Thick blocky hands, thick blocky feet. You know what they say about that. Oh. Yeah, big metal's big, big shoes. Yeah, I was about to show it to that creature before it died, but yeah, put it on <laughs> my finger. Look at it and go, yeah, yeah. At least I got some flings, also known as tripods. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, but you, um, when you held it, uh, Ubron, you did notice uh, that it has merfolk uh, structures to it. It's probably something that has been made. Uh, by the merfolk themselves. Nice. Gift, possibly, or it says make a curse on just, the side. Just some <laughs> someone maybe having a wish to walk on walk on the water instead of living in it. I wanna be where the people are. <laughs> All right. So, Tar, would you go ahead and roll me a flat d twenty? Nettle Maw. A stunning 14. 14. Mm, that's good enough. It takes a while, but eventually the wind catches up quite n- nicely, and you have a uh, soft trial for the days. The waves and everything seems to be with you, and it's blowing in the direction that you're traveling as well. Sweet! Wait. So, did you ever look up on the map, Terror? Uh, the, yeah, you looked up where the supposed yeah. necklace symbol was on the map. And uh, you set course, and it takes some time, but eventually, uh, unless anyone else has any special conversations that they feel like having, I would like for Cho to go ahead and roll me a perception. Oh, God. 22. 22. Very well. In the distance, you see... Let me just bring you here. It's a ghost! Oh, wonderful. No, I'm kidding. If it was a ghost, I would have shot it. You see an island with one of the edges of it being surrounded with these circular stones. And one of them is a bit larger in nature. Uh, But it looks almost habitable, this place. It has some... What you can see is maybe some cottages or sheds or shacks or something is on it as well as some palm trees hey captain i see an island but aren't we looking for ghosts i mean i mean well how far away are we and i'll you know try to figure out how far away like three clicks Whole clicks or like whole clicks. Oh, okay. Like, no cuts uh, in the way. What's the uh, what's the unit of measurement for water? Uh, Fathoms. A sail. A nautical mile. Ah, it's got the word ah, nautical in it. Got two nautical miles away. That we must be close. Yeah. I hope this is the place that we want to go to. It's not full um, of ghosts. He would be here. He would. He would. He was supposed to help us. I thought we was underwater. He was gonna hook us up um, with the, the stuff. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I would like to look around and see if I see, you know, a, a dolphin, uh, some sea creature of some kind. Uh, relatively large. All right. 
Um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Yeah, perception. It was leagues. My that, that's a one. That's nope. a not one. Um, well, not because of you not finding fish. It seems just awfully quiet in the uh, beneath the waves, so to say. Uh, for this area of the world, that is all a bit concerning, almost. Uh, as this part, this part of the world usually has very flourishing uh, water life. Lots of fish and bigger sea creatures, what it might be, dolphins, sharks, whatnot. But you don't see anything. The ocean's Almost pitch black, just looking down here. Oh, good. Inky black, perhaps. And it takes a while, but eventually you come, you come closer and closer to the island. And uh, it's up to you if you wish to stop here. But this is not the... Uh, the is this not our goal? This is is this where the necklace thing is? This yeah, is where the is necklace this, thing is. The necklace is on the island or in the water near the island? Well, when you look at it, you see the rock formation around as one of one point of the island has this a rock formation that almost looks like a necklace. I yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. That's that's clever. I think I think both Joe and Tritian has the moment where we look at all the rocks and go, "Oh, right, of course it is. That's a necklace. It's a oh, necklace. Right. The stones. Oh. I see because it's a circle of rocks. Yeah, and, and it's so, at the circle on the boat. Yeah, and and it's not shoe related or feet related, but you know, you know, whatever." Um, I, so, um, my character wants to recommend that perhaps we do not park inside the island chain circle, but perhaps on the outside of it. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's not, let's not be encircled. All right. Uh, Tyro, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Mighty 10. Mighty 10. Uh, no. Yes, so. Uh, it takes you a while, roughly like an additional half an hour, until you find one of these rocks that has some... Um, some semblance of a jagged point or something where you could tie your ship to. Uh, or just... One that seems fitting, where it won't crash in. anchor, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll right. uh, engage the loading bay, and yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as you drop anchor, uh, you get a familiar sensation uh, over on, as a soft mist starts to come around the ship once again. Ah. Uh. Make ready, my friends. I believe our ghostly friend may be returning momentarily. Oh fuck! He makes quite an interest. You have to give him the uh, entrance. You have to give him that. Like, I don't it. I'll be. I'm gonna be below deck then, because I don't want to deal with this guy. Fair enough. I mean, let me know yeah. when he's gone. What was his name again? Will do, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, Pat 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 yes. Yeah. And sure enough, uh, he shows up, but this time his coat has been dragged asunder, and uh, his face is almost ripped, and you can see parts of the bones beside him, almost as if his entire being is being devoured by something. And this smoke now just drags right down through your deck and into the depths below. Directly below us. Well, almost uh, a bit diagonally. 
but gotcha. not directly, okay. uh, but it goes into the ocean below you. In in yes. like towards the into the circle or outside of the circle. Was, well, there, like one one of the let's say the pointiest bead, the one in the center, the biggest rock among them, just outside that one and straight down. Oh. So I, I point in the direction of, or Oberon points in the direction of uh, of the trailing smoke and says, is your ship down there, my dead friend? We are all down here. Hurry, it's taking us. Is there anything you can do to give us aid while we try and free you from this horrible fate? I will do what I can. And he That's sort all of, I ask. He lifts up his hands and he it some ethereal water pulls us out from his open palms and uh, you have now been granted the spell, which you probably know Oberon is water breathing. So you could uh, stay underwater for, I believe it's one hour, or is it two? And is this temporary, this spell, or is it something I'm going to add to my sheet here? No, it's temporary. He has... Uh, uh, Given cast a, he's, he's cast water He breathing. has cast... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, if you're gotcha. accepting of it. I am. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't there a last one? As he looks around for the little scrawny guy. Go! Is he gone? No, come here. Joe, come up here. We have a gift for you. Oh, okay, never mind. What's up? Oh, good. <laughs> you are here. Oh, God, he's still here. He is. <laughs> and he looks you worse. see this pulsing ripple effect through the air coming towards you. Help us. And he too casts ah. water breathing on you. I didn't cast it in nice. time. <laughs> and with I'm the last pulse now. coming out, you see him once again being ripped and dragged down into the God, I'm gonna dark be below. Possessed. Oh, I don't want to be possessed. Right. Uh, we ready ourselves? And and Tyr Tyrion, Tritrin just begins stretching. Uh, uh, we need to get ready. Uh, yeah, I, I take my I take my tri uh, Triton and hop, 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 call the Stanix to get warmed up. Hop, hey, hop, 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 hop. What's going on? You gotta go down there. And well, see you two on. can walk out there, <laughs> but I'm gonna have to swim. <laughs> Is it underwater? I think it just might be. You might have to take that uh, uh, that ring of yours off. I can't swim though. Just put the ring back on when you want to get up. Mm, there you go. Oh, I guess I could just sink. Oh, okay. Also, you can breathe water, so you'll be fine for now. This is wind. <laughs> That's not a goblin trait. <laughs> no, because uh, J Jenkins, the flat foot here, gave it to you. Jenkins, cannonball foot, gave it to you just now. Also, because I'm possessed by a ghost, I can breathe underwater. Exactly. You're part oh. dead now. You better yes, watch out. This, is a familiar, this spell is familiar to me from my time with the merfolk. I recognize this. This is a water-breathing spell. We should be able to breathe down there for, oh, you know, uh, a time at least. You know, perhaps an hour or so. All right, let's go before I get unpossessed. Yeah. All right, so I hop in the water and start swimming down towards the direction where the... Uh, smoke was and uh, i'll go ahead and and just drag joe with me because he says he doesn't know how to swim so i yeah. reach over and grab joe i'll just hold on i just to, like, this way my friend and then just leap into the water yep uh when tear hops off the side he sort of lands like like he expects it to be ice so standing on steadily ah, and then oh, okay it's just flat ground essentially and he just walks after the others above him. I guess he didn't take his ring off yet. <laughs> no. So I'm just going to plunge under the water and he'll be on the top. Well, shit. <laughs> no, yeah, I took my ring off when we went in. Hold oh, good. Off. Yes. Okay, cool. So we're swimming. Yeah. All right. So 
Are we able to communicate with each other when we have water breathing or no? Probably not, right? No. Uh, okay, I, I want to I, I surface after a little ways of swimming towards the center of what I perceive to be the, the direction of the pull of the smoke from the ghost. And I look at, uh, at, uh, at Joe and say, Joe, please what? use that a fantastic sight of yours to help us see what is down there as we get closer. When you see something that I need to know about, please tap me on the arm. Let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. All right, and then we plunge yep. back underwater. I have my Triton. I have my uh, coal. I have. I have uh, one. Tri I have. Let's see. I've got my Triton of Fish Command in my hand, and the cold Triton strapped to my back, and a loincloth, and Joe. And Joe. And I've got a poncho. So. So I'm not getting yeah. wet because it's. Magic. After a while, I take off my ring and I swim after them. All right, very well. Let's see how this works. Have you switched to a new set now? See what? A new have you, a new set. Yeah, have you got a, yourself? Oh, yes, a new I, have, I see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Ooh. How do we find out our our swimming um, distance? You don't have one. Uh, Water is considered difficult terrain, so you move. So half. But you, I, yeah, it's half unless you have a swim yeah. speed, in which case you can move gotcha. normally. Um, ranged attacks, their distance is halved and their disadvantage. Uh, there's uh, a lot of underwater combat stuff, but we can deal with that in a awesome. later. We'll get to it. Sorry, just uh, making sure that everything is in order. Just yeah. waiting to run Kraken.exe. Don't worry. <laughs> well, as you notice when you scouted for fish before, the waters are murky around these areas. On, probably because it seems to be a lot deeper here. As you, when you look down, it seems you seem to have ended up in some sort of chasm underneath the water. Uh, if, who would be taking points? Would that be you once again? Uh, Joe is the only yeah. one who can see. Yeah, he's with. Uh, I'm taking point, but holding Joe in front of me like a shield. He's the body, I'm the eyes. Facts. Master Blaster. It's so, uh, Joe, go ahead and roll me a perception. Ten. Ten. Mm, okay, so it takes a while for you, since you're not very adept at looking mm. underneath water. It takes a while for you to discern the shapes and where you're actually going. But eventually you think that you have found yourself at a pretty good direction. And uh, the further you get down, you start to see more and more lights around here. Flora underneath the water, seagrass looking very strange and luminescent. And being a bit ripply, even through, you know, watery eyes, you will be able to see quite clearly what's around you down here. And it is beautiful. Oh, excellent. But it almost seems to be some. It almost seems like you have passed through some darkier, murkier parts as the water down. It's like you go through a fog cloud. Mm -hmm. And now you're underneath it. And it's quite beautiful. And in a solitary and unexpecting way. And... Um. Here, sort of scratches his chin and then he uses minor illusion and he sort of makes there's like tiny stick figures that flow through a dark cloud and come out to the other side and on the other side it's kind of like like little lights it's like he it's like a child's project you know 
except that it's a minor illusion. And he shrugs. So I'd like to um, roll for survival and uh, see if I can perceive anything or better understand the environment that we're in, see if I can see something that was maybe disturbed. Go you ahead. Know, any, any sense of what might be happening, John? Yes. Uh, go ahead and roll me first a um, yeah survival check and then a perception. So 19 on the survival. Okay. 14 on the... Uh, on the perception. 14 on the perception. Okay. So, you know of some of these plants, and they are not to, especially those that are a bit more luminescent than the others. Uh, don't interact with them with your bare skin. They're all, almost like underwater, what are they called? Nettles? Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. As they will burn your skin like jellyfish. Uh, which, if you're unlucky, being thrown into them, they might actually cause such a reaction that you will be paralyzed. No and shit! That, and that is not a situation you might want to find yourself being unlimited time underneath the waves. So I, um, I wave my big beefy arms at my friends to get their attention, then swim up near one, point at it, and then run my thumb across my throat to let them know it's dangerous. Uh, There's a shark behind you. I, you can I speak underwater. I'm just, I'm just shouting into. I mean, the I can water speak, but it's just gonna be bubbles. No, I mean, because I mean, Joe's. Oh, never mind. I'm just screaming Tear. in the oh, watery abyss. Rubber, rubber, rubber. Yeah, Tear sort of creates an illusion of the stick figure, sort of cutting the thing, the the uh, the thing that would paralyze people. And shows it to the others. Like, what, what is your... Effectively, he's made an, an illusion spell that shows, like, a tiny stick figure cutting the, the, the plants. And then he looks to the rest of you guys for a reaction. Um, I shake my head and say, you know, just try and do it motion to stay away. Stay away. Uh, Obron, go ahead and roll me a nature check, if you would be so kind. Twelve. Twelve. All right. So, you know that even with just uh, that roll, that cutting them would cause them to cease to glow. So if you want to disperse light uh, or limit your field of vision down here, uh, it could be mm -hmm. an idea to cut them down. But they would still act... Uh, contain their venom or poison. At least for a while. Eventually, they would, uh, gotcha. the venom would pass, and they are actually quite good as a, a sort of dried side dish to some some food. Nice. Well, I'm, my, my, I'm imagining making tasty, sparkly seafloor uh, kelp sticks for later. later. And you rolled a 14, was it, on your perception? Mm, 12 plus... Yeah, 14. So, what you see uh, when taking a bit look around, uh, this bigger cloud. It almost looks like a storm cloud above you. Uh, but parts of it are being sucked away into uh, this, into a cave nearby. Or this sort of big opening on one of the cliffs inside this chasm that you're walking down into. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I want to check out the cavern, so I start slowly walking my way towards the cavern. It's a good 300 feet until there, and the area is filled with 
uh, paths and patches of this growing kelp, among other things, mostly uh, just other sea flora and some clamps and seashells, whatnot. Um, but how far close to it would you like to go before stopping? Um, honestly, I'd like to try and get up right to the mouth of it and take a look inside. You know, obviously it's trying to be perceptive and make sure that I'm not seeing any danger as I get closer. Okay. So are you going to do this stealthily? yourself as much as you can and um i mean i guess so i wasn't thinking about trying to be stealthy <laughs> i don't think i have any particular facility for that what would i roll for that stealth so d20 plus one no oh, all right three. three i make lots of noise as i flutter over there <laughs> well n yeah so, um, well, you, you take some time to navigate around the um, the patches, and eventually you come closer and closer to this mouth that almost looks like a jaw being cut out from this huge rock formation. It almost looks like a jaw? Yes. Um, I look around on the ground for something to pick up, or for something to um, pick up and throw in there. There are rocks and among other things around you. Okay, I pick up a rock and huck it in there. All right, so um, go ahead and roll me a strength uh, strength check. Six. Six. So you haven't really accounted for how differently it, it is still being underwater in this way and throwing things around. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the first rock that you throw doesn't come fly very far. Uh, but you can see some movement with your uh, perce passive perception, as you said, you would be looking around at all times. Movement, some movement around me or in the cave? Um, in the cave, there is some slight movements. Gotcha. Something's in the cave, my friends. And then I realize nobody can hear me, and I just go. Got it. And I see uh, Joe go. Blah, blah, blah. Tyr uses the minor illusion to sort of, there's like a stick figure that, look that, that looks into a cave, and then the cave just sprouts out tentacles. I start swimming towards the cave. I nod my head and grin savagely. And I cast protection from poison on myself. <laughs> More raises a hand to everybody, and then he uses silent image. And at like at, at the top of the cave, he sort of creates this delicious tuna. And just sort of this a silent image of a tuna kind of just creeps up at the edge and sort of sniffs inside. Like he doesn't do, know what fish do, but it sort of sniffs the edge of the cave. Seems to consider going inside. When you, know you do, big a tuna is tunas yeah, are huge. Tuna. They come in yeah, they can. Get they get huge. Big. Yeah, like there's like a can size. You know? <laughs> when you do, um, you see from just from a spear coming or seemingly out of nowhere, pen attempting to. Uh, being flung towards your illusion. And I imagine, do, does it disperse, or is it one of those things where it just passes through? I'm not sure how minor illusions work. What is going, what, what is it again that's going uh, towards the illusion? A spear. A spear. 
Let's see That's here. Cool. Image is purely visual. Um, Being let's see. Is well, that's up for you to decide if it just passes through. Or if Physical it... interaction with the image reveals it to be an illusion, because things can pass through it. Ah, I see. So, gotcha. uh, the spear passes through. I would it. like to. Yeah, I would like ahead. to see if I recognize the kind of uh, spear it is. Go ahead. Roll me a history. Yeah, history, I guess, or history or survival. Natural one. You... Well. Wait. Wait. Wait, before Roll Twenty is an ass tonight. Holy shit. It's before like the fourth you... one. <laughs> yeah, you you are quite unlucky with your rolls. But I was going to say, before you roll, you can choose to go with either history or survival. Because I imagine this might have been something that you have come across or used maybe yourself. Right, yeah, well, okay. Survival means six. <laughs> six. Uh but it was still a Yes. Oh yeah, it wasn't that one. So, um, it just passes through the creature and goes into into the sand, almost as if it takes a dive and goes underneath it, so you can no visually see it anymore. Got it. But the spear did not seem to come from inside the cave. Um, I would like to roll survival to see if I can tell where the spear came from, like follow the bubble trail or something. I think that would be a pers. You know what? Yeah, go ahead and roll the survival. Yes. 15. 15. So, with that, and you've been obviously been hunting and doing st things for yourself in the past, you do notice the trajectory that it had it came from one of the plateaus above you where there are more where there is more of this luminescent uh, ocean kelp and when you look at them, if you would be so kind to roll me a perception 10 10 um you see an arm coming back, drawing itself back into uh, the kelp itself. So, sorry, say again? From You see, when you looked up uh, on top of the plateau, you saw, saw an arm that was being stretched out as if it it was the one that threw the spear. And then it just... Are we talking fishy arm? Are we talking humanoid arm? It Are we looked, talking merfolk arm? It looked fishy, merfolky. It looked not human, at least. Gotcha. Gotcha. A okay. native of the water. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Um... I'm going to go ahead and start swimming up in that direction. Uh, very well. Uh, just remember that You're trying that to come it's... at a sort of oblique angle in a, in, you know, to make it uncomfortable or awkward. You know, basically skimming along the rock cliff, you know, sort of coming around the edge. Trying to not yes. fly straight at it out in the open. All right. So I guess what half cover kind of thing? Yeah, both of you would have, I would say. Uh, but go ahead and roll me a perception. Whatever that is. Yeah, go ahead and roll me a perception. Eight. Eight. Whatever might have been there does not seem... Probably, a, it's probably moved by, by now. Because you can't see it. Oh, so I've, I've reached the plateau? You reach the plat. Uh, yeah, you swim up uh, to the plateau, and what do you? Uh, they, oh, let me explain. This like sea grass. It's quite. It's very tall. It's not just some like grass feature on the water. It's more like huge kelp leaves gotcha, being stretched gotcha, up. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry for not being clear about that before. Okay, I'd like to uh, investigate with my survival skill. What exactly are you investigating with it? I'm investigating in and around using my copious experience fishing underwater with Merfolk to try and perceive what was there, where it went, what's going on, 
you know, see if it left anything behind, markings, you know, footprints in the sand on the bank that we're up on, uh, all that business. All right. So, okay. Um, yeah. So you swim a bit closer, I assume. Uh, so you can actually get a good overlooking view of this area. Yes. Um, but when you do, you see a greenish creature with big uh, black eyes, almost like this sharp shark uh, teeth ridden mouth. And it's looking up towards you and you can see these black like vertigo's veins being all across its body as it swims towards you with an attack. And before we roll, roll before we roll, it has, uh, since it saw you, it detected you before you came up there. It makes one surprise sneak, sneak attack towards you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, cool. So it attacks me. What did you say, Ross? I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. It hurls a knife towards you. Uh, knife. Thirteen. Um, yeah. It rolled 13, a thirteen. It, um, for two hits. It bounces off my massive glistening muscles. Yeah. So uh, the bottom end of the dagger just—it was a bad throw. And you see this creature uh, just attempting to swim away a bit. And it's time for you to roll initiative. Ten. A mighty twelve. A mightier fifteen. No, mine's better. Mine's a bigger number. I'm Mine super balanced and stuff. Mine has a two. All right, so Tara, you roll the 12, and Jabber, so, you roll the 15. 15. So obviously, I go first. Watch this creature get like uh, a nat 20 in initiative, and it just goes away. Oberon, you roll the 10. Or yes. Uh, this creature is rolling so incredibly badly. <laughs> it rolled a failed on its perception check towards your stealth that you rolled a while back, so it did not see you. It failed. And nice. uh, yes, so uh, Jabber. <laughs> it is your go. I swim closer to it with my fancy boots. With your fancy boots. My fancy boots. And I shoot it. Yeah. yeah, so it's the plateau is a roughly 20 feet further up than you were, so you would have some movement to get even further up if you want to and get a Pretty good view. Yeah, as long as I can see it, I'm going to shoot him. Well, since you know that you're looking for something, you, I will grant you a bonus action perception, if you wish, oh, to see if you can spot it. Uh, dirty 20. Yeah. Uh, you notice some strange movement going up further away from you into this grass. Cool. Uh, and I you have vision say, of it. I will fire upon the creature. That is a very low number. Does a nine hit? Unfortunately, it doesn't. Cool. Maybe because of some reason with you not being used to firing underwater, but the arrow just flies. I will, I will try a second shot. Go ahead. 
That is a nat 20, but it doesn't feel right because it kind of hit the edge of my board. And Up to you, man. Caught. It's gets cocked. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fair. Okay, uh, 23. <laughs> 23 is a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. Mm, this is a lot of damage. Oh, I rolled a one. Uh, 16 damage. 16 damage. So, the arrow flies true, and it hits it straight through the thigh. And blood, a lot of blood seems to be coming out of it. <laughs> you must have hit some pretty big vein or something. I mean, he's got the bees. Uh, they're, they're very obvious on him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and I will use the rest of my movement to swim closer to him. Yeah, so Probably an additional... Him, but just closer. No, he is sort of like 20 feet away from you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And terror. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, how far away am I from the creature? Well, you... I imagined you were at the same point uh, below the plateau. Uh, Probably, that, yeah. Uh, that Joe was in, yeah. That, yeah, that Joe was uh, on his turn, so... You have the same movement if you wish to. Right, so I'll swim up, uh, and when I get to that point where I can see him, I move my silent image uh, ahead of him, because how far is the creature away from me? Uh, if you move up next to him, he is sort of 20 feet away from you, the both of you. Okay. I can create, with silent image, I can create a 15-foot cube. So, what... What he does is that he sort of he gestures with his hands and on the out of the grass and the plateau, illusory walls of stone, like old uh, undersea stone create to sort of create uh, like a dead end for him. I mean, he can still go upwards from if he if he can't see that it's an illusion, but it looks like walls are risen, rising from the ground and blocking his access. To how how high is the wall? Uh, I don't know what the math would be, but it says fifteen foot cube. Yeah, so, so fifteen feet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would assume. So, yeah. Yes. All right. Any bonus action? Uh, uncanny dodge. No, nothing. <laughs> so, it's the creature's turn, and. It uh, it gets it, it gets fooled by the walls, and it sort of stops in its tracks and just swims around inside of it for a bit, see to attempt to find some exit out, and then it sees that it's an opening up top, and it will use its remaining movements uh, to attempt to get as far as up as it can. So it's just sort of above the edge uh, of this um, illusionary wall that you created. And it's back to... No, it's you, Oberon. Yes. Huh? Uh, it's 20 feet away, yes? From you, yes. Excellent. Um, my swim, my speed is 40, so my swim speed will be 20, so I go ahead and spend my spin, my swim speed zipping over to him along the way i burst out into rage flexing my massive muscles and and you know uh air bubbles shoot out of my mouth and sort of a uh a lightning starts crackling around my body and just a flurry of bubbles all over myself as i sort of trail forward leaving a crackling lightning and bubble trail behind me um and i zap zap him with my fucking lightning on the way in before i do my attack all right, go ahead. Roll for nice. Uh, let's see. I'm looking it up. Hold on, real quick here. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've never used this one before. Okay, so they need to make a DC 13 saving throw for Dex. <laughs> it, it rolled a 12 with a plus zero, so it fails. It takes one d6 damage of lightning. 
go and ahead I'm and guessing roll for it damage. probably takes all of it because of the, the you know water people thing. These ones does not seem to have that flaw that the other other ones did. Cool, but it All takes right, so, four, four um, damage. So eight damage, including my strength. Or no, no, not just 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 because of yeah. Sorry, I can't infuse lightning with strength yet. I'm working on it. Um, so oh, four damage good. from the lightning. <laughs> it takes it. Um, it. It's one of its eyeballs starts to bubble and eventually pops, and it does look terrible. Awesome. Um, as I uh, as I meet it, I attack it with a reckless strike or reckless attack um, with my uh, uh, with with my my Triton of Cold. Um, I will. Nineteen to hit. Nineteen to hit does hit. Go ahead and roll damage using one or two hands. Two hands. So, yes. Uh, so seven plus my strength, so that's going to be uh, twelve, uh, eleven damage. Plus an additional one, so it's a, since it's a plus one magical weapon. Oh, yes, right, I keep forgetting that. Um, okay, yeah, so then seven, so eight, so eight, so then, yeah, so that it takes, um, it takes twelve damage uh, from that, and then I have a second attack I can do. If you wish. You just lobbed off its, I, I don't, some part of its body. You may decide. It's very dead. Okay. Uh, in, 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 that, in that case, I stab it again for good measure. <laughs> um, rolling a, oh, rolling a 10 to hit. <laughs> uh, that unfortunately misses. Damn. But it's dead. So you, if you want to, you can go ahead and roll uh, with advantage. Since it pats out. So technically that would be proned, I believe. Or unconscious. Three so again, what the fuck? God damn it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the bullshit, man. You <laughs> have the worst of luck. Tear does the slow I, I, clap I, I, underwater. I hold my triton above my head and go and just leave a bunch of fucking, fucking stuff all over me. You can barely see me because I'm just in a flurry of lightning crackles and, and, and bubbly water. A lot of things happen, and you see, as he explained, and eventually this dead floating creature just bobs up in front of you. And you, Oberon, if you... Oh, all of you can roll me a history check. Or nature. You, your choice. Uh, 23. 23. <laughs> Four. And Mr. Jabber. Oh, I'm sorry, you said nature? You, uh, you may choose for yourself. Hi history or nature. You go ahead. I got, a, got an 11. 11. All right. So, uh, both Oberon and Joe, you know this creature to be a Sahaguin. Sahaguin. Mm. Yes. Let's see. I'm going. To... Uh, Let's see. Does this. Can you see this? Not yet. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes. Well. Oh, God, it's disgusting. Yes. Yes. Now that looks, however, that has to be delicious. However, it's commonly very much green, like this one is. But the one that you killed has a lot more darker veins on it. Its eyes are completely black, and it does not look. When you touch it, it feels almost already dead. Like it's been dead a while. Before yes. We killed it. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So I grab its head and chuck it down towards the mouth of the cave. And 
you see the body with a roll of a little, of 21 strength yes or no, 23 strength that is strength. definitely enough so as you see it f- being thrown towards and crashes down into the sand just outside the maw of this mountain we will leave it here until next week because it's time to leave oh! No. <laughs> Can't so, wait another week for a kraken. Come on, man. Jabber, would you do us yes. the honors? Yes. I have two people to thank. One is this new, as I scroll up and see, who it is, Mr. Phoenix for the follow. We appreciate you and thank you for joining us on have partially through this adventure. You can find our VODs to figure out what you missed. And there was also one more who I cannot scroll up and find, but he followed partially through this week. And probably during the Sea of Thieves. Nitro. Yeah, Nitro was it. Nitro. Thanks, Nitro, for the follow during Sea of Thieves. We appreciate you. I'd like to thank Shaka Panda for joining us on this side story adventure of heroes and piracy. Uh, I believe we have about one more episode of this one, roughly, of this episode. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, one, maybe two. I think it will be done next week, but yes. So we'll be wrapping this up and getting to the climax and some tittering off and uh we have our own podcast who which is gonna have another episode coming out tonight slash tomorrow depending where you live and then if uh shaka has anything he would like to plug while he's here Oh, yeah. Well, you can find me on Mixer.com forward slash Shaka Panda streaming all kinds of times all throughout the week. Uh, I'm Shaka Panda on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and Shaka Panda plays on YouTube and Facebook. And, of course, you can go to ShakaPanda.com to get all of that and more. And our podcast is available at ShakaAndPals.com, where we talk deep dives into content creation and behind-the-scenes stuff of all that creative biz. See, as you can tell, he is a professional and much more fluid and rolls off the tongue much better than me with saying his things. No, no, Jabba, you've got your own style. Keep I've had saying. lots of practice, lots just, of practice. <laughs> just showing me up, but... Uh, you we invited to, it, Jabba. I mean... I we'll, try to be back again. we'll try to be back again next week, barring any sicknesses or uh, life troubles, and I still don't have a closing. So... <laughs> See you next, guys. Next week, guys. Take care. Thanks for hanging. See you next week. Bye-bye.